the IRS whistleblower. Now, if Democrats can't stop Joe Biden, maybe the IRS whistleblower might. He just might be able to do it. Vivek Ramaswamy is one of the many candidates running against Joe Biden. But first, he's got to win the primary. He joins us now. Vivek, I know we got a big announcement about your book coming out. But first things first, your thoughts about what might be happening on the left. Yeah, so look, I actually see it, Brian. The essence of what's happening is it is a myth that Joe Biden is actually the one running for president. It is the managerial industrial complex that's actually behind him. And his cognitive failures, that's not just a bug. That is a feature in the same way that it is for John Fetterman as a U.S. senator. The administrative state, the managerial class, can actually control its puppets more effectively when those puppets are literally unable to think. It does strike me closer to a form of elder abuse than it does to the hubris of Joe Biden. That's really what I see in this. And whoever wins this nomination, I'm running to win the Republican nomination. I don't see myself as then running against Joe Biden. I see myself as running against the managerial class with a puppet in front of it, much like the Wizard of Oz portrays an image. It's a false projection of the reality that's actually behind him. That's actually what I see, Brian. And I think that once we wake up to that, we realize this is the managerial class versus the everyday citizen. I mean, you saw it in Pennsylvania. You got a world renowned surgeon who lost to a man that's clearly not functioning in Senator Fetterman. And it doesn't seem to matter. Five percent of the American public want to see a rematch between President Trump and President Biden. Only 35 percent want to see Trump run again, too. What does that mean to you as a candidate? Well, look, I think I look at the Democratic Party, first of all, saying that it's not going to host debates. Look at how they're protecting that incumbent. I think we in the Republican Party need to be the opposite of that. We need to lead the way with actual vision. Ask the question of the what and the why. Stop obsessing over who we prop up through the question of the who. That's for the Democratic Party. And so what I see as the opportunity here is for us to actually lead in the conservative movement with vision, Brian. We've talked enough about bashing the Biden agenda. What's our own vision? To me, it's a vision grounded on the basic concepts the country was built on, the individual, the family, the nation, God. Let's start talking more about those things. And if we're successful in painting the vision of what it means to be American, I think we win this election in a landslide. I'm the first millennial ever to run for U.S. president as a Republican. Biden's literally over twice my age and then some. I think that's going to be a matchup that I look forward to on the debate stage with Biden if I'm to get there. Right. Uh, but uh, real quick. Also, this is a big day for you. Actually, tomorrow uh, you have a new book coming out. It's called Capitalist Punishment. It's called Capitalist Punishment. Well, how would you characterize what we're going to get tomorrow? What we're going to be able to buy. Yeah. So I actually wrote this book long before I knew I was running for president. It goes into the details of the ESG movement, how the Biden administration and the left uses companies and asset managers and financial institutions to do through the back door what they could not get done through the front door under the Constitution. You wonder what's happening at Budweiser. You wonder what's happening in corporate America when they actually adopt these woke policies. It's because there's puppet masters behind the scenes like BlackRock and State Street who are imposing these ESG agendas using your money to do it. And so the subtitle of the book is How Wall Street is Using Your Money to Create a Country You Didn't Vote For. That's how I got the title Capitalist Punishment. And even mm. though I'd written the book beforehand, I really wanted to put it out even though we're in a campaign. I'm donating all my proceeds actually to a nonprofit that's pursuing litigation right. against the likes of American Express. But I think that's what we need to educate Americans right. on in this country. Hey, Vivek, you could uh, capture this slogan, a vote for Vivek. I won't take away your car or your gas oven. That would be a change because that's what's happening every day. We're losing something else. Yeah, you want vote for Vivek is abandoning the climate religion. That's a big part of what it is. Abandon the climate cult. We describe it on our website, Brian, pretty well. Vivek2024.com. Right. You want to see how we take America first to the next level. Let's start with abandoning that climate cult. And ESG is a big part of that cancer. Well, I'll tell you what, anyone on the debate stage with you better bring their A game. Vivek, thanks so much. Congratulations on your great start. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate it. You got it. Meanwhile, there are new signs tonight that the crime epidemic under Joe Biden is completely out of control. Kevin Cork has that story. Kevin. Even Brian, this is interesting, actually. You know, until recently, the armored car industry, frankly, catered.